Oh, nice. Hey, I am Jumbo Thea Island. Daniels with Raw Vlogcast, Vlogcast, where we keep it real, authentic. Absolutely. And I talk with people who are willing to share their passion. And tonight, I am with da, 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 Anthony <laughs> Paul. And he just got done playing with Mitch Woods and the Rocket 88s. We're at Peace Town, and you guys opened up Peace Town fabulously. Had the people up dancing. Thank you so much. The first show of the season. Yes, I know. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, it is. You're like getting to be the first. I, we, so, yeah. Well, well, tell me, who was your first? What got you interested? <laughs> first what? Mm, <laughs> okay. okay. No. <laughs> so, tell me all the instruments you play and what inspired you. Who got you started? I only play guitar anymore. As a kid, I played clarinet, and later I played saxophone in bands, but guitar, that's guitar what I do. Guitar is your thing, and um, you do it well. Well, thank you very yeah. much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did, I did. Okay. So you play the guitar. I do that, yeah. And, and who was it that you saw and went, I want to play the guitar like that? You know, I had big brothers, much older, like nine and 10 years older, and when I was a kid, they took me to see The Who in 1968 and then The Rolling Stones in 1969. Oh my gosh. Opening for The Rolling Stones was Ike and Tina Turner and B.B. King. And I think that did it, seeing B.B. King. And uh, also my brothers had great records. Mm -hmm. Back then, um, I'm talking about early 60s to late 60s. You know, when I was a little kid, they were playing a lot of blues records were actually the popular records, you know, like, mm -hmm. or blues based stuff like Chuck Berry and Fats Domino it and was a good start, yeah, yeah, Huey Lewis and, or Huey, Huey, yeah. Huey Smith and the Clowns. <laughs> Huey came along you later. Know, other Huey, Huey yeah. Smith. Uh, anyways, so I grew up hearing a lot of cool music. My dad was a big uh, music fan and so really, so it, was in the kinda, it kind of was in the blood. Yeah, my brothers both played and my dad played trumpet and so, so Christmas time was you know music and yeah, fun of, and yeah, yeah. I kind of like that yeah so, hard. but uh, I think seeing BB King would be pretty much uh, a defining moment definitely as much as I, I really didn't know much about him I was going because the Rolling Stones okay but then I and I didn't know about Ike and Tina Turner either but I still have vivid you know them now yeah yeah, uh -huh. yeah it's hard to miss yeah you know that is the fun thing about music is we might go see a band mm -hmm. that we know mm -hmm be all excited about it and then get turned on to somebody yeah. totally fabulous and new. That right. happened to me last night, but this isn't about me, but that is the beautiful thing about music and yeah. how it connects people. Absolutely. And all of you guys. That's the job. That's what music's supposed to do. Yes. Bring joy and connect people. Did you hear that? Bring joy and connect people. It took me a long time to figure out that that is the purpose, you know, but it is. Bring in joy. If you want to boil it down to one thing, it's bring joy. And hopefully we do that sometimes. Well, the enthusiasts out here loved it. Yeah. And so it was going to see the Rolling Stones, Ike and Tina Turner, and, and then BB King. In 69. 1969, it was the Los Angeles Forum. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. How old were you? Uh, let's see, I would have been about 12. Okay. Yeah, 12 or 13. Yeah, uh, yeah, 12. That, that 12. Time. Yeah. And now I heard from uh, Little B that you are in a big band. and Well, I have my own band. I, I'm a sideman with Mitch, and uh, I'll be back here with Tom Brigney in a couple of weeks. Wonderful. I work with him. I work with other people. But I have my own band. It's called the Anthony Paul Soul Orchestra, and it's a um, 12-piece band. We have uh, four horns, four singers, guitar, bass, drums, and keyboards, and we write a lot of our own music. But it's all in the style of old soul music, kind of like Otis Redding and Aretha Franklin. That's the kind of mm. genre. We do some old music too, but we write our own. And uh, yeah, that, so that's mostly what I'm doing. We'll be going to Europe next month for, uh, for about three and a half weeks, oh, doing that's festivals wonderful. over there. And uh, we're starting up uh, this month with local shows in California. Getting yourself, you know, back into the swing of things, well, literally. Been, well, literally, yes, literally, yeah. It's been a while since we've had the band going. We played last winter and then we had a big hiatus and right. now we're just getting fired up again. Wonderful, I'm thrilled to hear that. Okay, any juicy, fun story that pops <laughs> up in your head about you and music? Uh, God, uh, now you put me on the spot. Uh, uh -oh. Give me something more to go on, let's okay. see. Um, hmm, some people like fun stories, some people like the, the stories that they shouldn't tell. And the salacious. Make it a little PG. Um, something crazy that happened. One one person was telling me how somebody fell on his lap while he was playing. Wow. 
Wow. You wow. know, stuff like that happens to you guys. Yikes. Um, the behind the scenes for playing well, music. You know, uh, all kinds of things happen to you when you're traveling with a band. Uh, mm -hmm. I can tell you about a night, a Christmas night at JFK FK Airport where tell we were us. stranded. Yes. Well, we were on our way to Italy for gigs. We left on Christmas Day. We're supposed to start on the 27th. We got to JFK and that was where we're supposed to change planes and uh, just starting to snow a little bit when we landed. And then it kept snowing, it kept snowing. Before you know it, there's about a foot of snow out there. That's a lot of snow. And, uh, you know, we got on, finally they get us on the plane and we sit on there for about an hour and they say, no, oh, everybody off this plane can't go. They did it again. And we sat on there for another hour, and then finally said, okay, the flight crew's time has expired. You know, they can live. Everybody back in the airport, before we know it, everybody's gone. And there's no, you can't get a cab, you can't get a hotel, you can't get nothing. Scary movies out of that. Yeah. So, and all they have are these little hard plastic, not even benches that you get flat on, but each one had a curved place for your butt, you know, and... Not good and for there sleeping. Was, there was no food. There was just like vending machines with candy bars and stuff. And and meanwhile, we didn't know how we were going to get out and of there the next Christmas. day. We finally, in the morning, got in these huge lines of all the flights that were canceled. Finally got um, the good the good part of the ending. We finally got booked and wound up in business class. As we were. As the airport was kind of shutting down that night, I happened to just see Martha Stewart leaving the airport. Now, she had a limo and everything. But the funny coincidence, the next day when we finally got on a plane, I was right behind Martha Stewart. <laughs> so, anyway, we got on, got to Italy a day late, and had to just kind of get there and immediately go play. And, and you did it. We did, we did. We that's always a, make things work. So that's a great things story. Like, eh, well, I guess, you know, it's a little war story, whatever. <laughs> I like it. You know, you got to see Martha Stewart. Is it yeah. behind Martha Stewart? I heard she played, you know, hung out with Snoop Dogg and hanging yeah. out with you. She uh, well, likes those there, musicians. Yeah, well, this was probably before Snoop Dogg. I'm probably talking about like 1990 or something. But, oh, boy. But, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of stuff happens. Anything you want to say to the audience about following... Your passion, living, you're still playing music, you're well, doing it your whole life. I'm 65 and uh, I've been doing this since I was 19 and uh, I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> no, I've, ne I've almost never had a, another job. So yeah, I think for me, following my passion at least, it worked out, you know, I, I, I enjoy what I do still. After Lucky all this man. time, 45 years later, 46 years later, yeah. Oh, what a so, lovely thing to say. Yeah. What a good life. Yeah, I, I, I have no complaints. So do what you love. Do what you love. Simple as that. You know, there's those things like uh, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life or something like that. I've heard that one before. I might have it a little messed up, but <laughs> it goes something like that. Sounds good to me. They'll get the idea. <laughs> so how can we find you and follow you? Well, my name is Anthony Paul. Okay. P-A-U-L-E. You got to put an E on the end of Paul. Oh, thank Anthony. you very much. Cut that greasy shit <laughs> And uh, this is my old friend Steve Griffith. Hi, Steve. It was a pleasure today. Met you on many of your previous interviews. Keep up the good that's work. That's right. <laughs> All right, Bye. guys. I'm Elizabeth this way. I, oh, I know. I have yeah. I've seen you forever. I know. It's been a long time. I mean, I, I've so tracked you and you're uh, doing these vlogs. Well, it's nice to see you guys. Arc. Oh. For everything. I mean, we, we always try to see you. Okay. Well, I mean, and it been a while because I appreciate it you it's know, it COVID. has been oh I mean, no but, kidding but I mean I'm we glad always I was surprised to see you guys here that's great yeah though. I mean we yeah. let me finish this up with him really oh, quick I'm and so sorry. Goes, no, no worries no, at all no, it's no, fun no. to have I'm you just, in here he but knows, we're at the good part knows. I mean it's a friendly right. boy can 50 you know all right so again how can people follow you that was an interview bomb wasn't that it? was an <laughs> interview bomb for sure it was fun okay uh, so my name is Anthony Paul P-A-U-L-E e. and you can go to Anthony Paul with an E on the end dot com okay. that's got all the stuff or I'm on Facebook uh, okay. Instagram I'm there but I don't do much but, but you can find the Anthony Paul Soul Orchestra 
on uh, Facebook. There's a band page. I have a personal page. And, uh, and they can look up where we're going to be around California this month and then in Europe next month. So. And if you're traveling to Europe, you might just run yes. into him. Come to, he uh, might sit in front of him in the airplane. Come come to the Umbria Jazz Festival in Italy. Umbridge? Umbria. Umbria. Yeah, it's on the website. U-M-B-R-I-A. Okay. And okay. then we're at the Pareto Soul Festival. Then we're going to the Canary Islands for, oh for another God. festival. The life of being yeah. a musician. How marvelous. Well, do I get to publish this and share you with the world? Sure, sure enough. Do that. I will do that. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Mm. All, right, All right. Cheers, everybody. Bye.